All right, 2023 JavaScript Rising Stars. Welcome to the eighth edition of JavaScript Rising Stars, the place to see the trends about the JS ecosystem. Now, the best part is if we click through this, let's just do a quick, at the end of this, actually, let's do a quick click through and watch the fact that I bet you every single year there's going to be things you've heard of that were the hottest ever in that year and are just either no, like, like debunked or just like considered cold as a fish. Okay, so let's go like this. The following graphs compare the number of stars added on GitHub over the last 12 months. Obviously, the most scientific measurement. We analyze projects coming from Best of JS, a curated list of best projects related to web platform. Oh, okay, so your bias is what you're trying to say. Note that you can click on the project to get more info. Okay, most popular overall projects. Okay, okay. Oh my goodness, HTMX mentioned. Let's go! HTMX mentioned you got Drizzle over here. Oh, baby. I don't even know what those two rings are. That doesn't look like the Fe – that almost looks like the Venn diagram of furries and Rust programmers. It's just it, – it, it's, it's, it's more of a circle than it is two circles. You know what I mean? All right. So what, let's, let's, let's just go all the way down and just start looking at them one, one at a time, okay? All right. Most popular projects overall. All right. Shad CDN. Shad CN UI. Okay, I, uh, I've seen this just so much. I don't even know what this Shad is. Uh, the hottest project of the year is Shad. A collection of UI components written in React allowing customizable styling through Tailwind CSS built on top of Radix, a set of headless components providing primitive primitives for concerns like accessibility and keyboard interactions. Oh, that's cool. Okay, because those are shitty things to program. Honestly, real talk. Those are shitty things to program, but doesn't a lot of HTML these days just come with, like, if you use the proper HTMLs, don't you get a lot of the accessibility just for freezy? Yeah, real talk also, when are we going to have React database components versus these, like, server components? Okay, we just got my, my, we just got my squeal JavaScript. I think we need database components. All right, anyways. Let's see, distinguish itself from other popular libraries such as MUI, Chakra UI, React Spectrum, by not by not being downloadable NPM package. Instead, you integrate Shad CN UI components through a terminal command that installs the underlying dependencies and copies the component source code directly into your code base for further modifications. Ah, a little bit of a vendor style. Okay. Okay, we got, you know, okay, Shad coming in there with a little bit of like some old school kind of vendor style. Okay, that's pretty cool. I, I actually appreciate that because the reality is, is well, I mean, okay, so this is kind of almost like a, a what's called a suckless style. The, the obvious down part about this is that if there's updates, you're effed, like is my guess, is you're effed if you make any modifications. But the good part is, is that you get to make modifications and it's part of your build system and you get to strip out whatever you want, blah, 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 blah. I can appreciate that. I can appreciate that. The project's success is closely tied to the widespread popularity of Tailwind. Uh, its compatibility with React server components, soon database components, and the presence of excellent documentation. It seems all new shiny React projects have adopted Shad CN UI. E, uh, it was even chosen by Kent C. Dodds for his cutting edge epic stack. Cutting edge. Bleeding edge. F full frontal edge. All right, let's, let's move on to number two. Bun, the champion of 2022, keeps its tremendous momentum, but Bun aims to be fast all-in-one toolkit for running, building, testing, and debugging JavaScript and TypeScript applications. Uh, you know, I, I'm not, I, 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 I don't think 2024 is going to be the year of Bun, and I'm not sure how great Bun's going to be. And I don't mean that it's not an impressive project. I don't mean that it's fantastic. I love that it uses Zig. I'm very happy that they're modern, modernizing a lot of stuff. But one of the huge problems that you always run into with Bun is like, let's say you make a Bun-specific script. What happens? Well, now you have to tell your coworker to go get Bun. That's kind of, it's, it's kind of tough. You know what I mean? To be like, oh yeah, you need Bun. You need, you got to go get a Bun. You know what I mean? Go get those Buns, boy. Right? Like, I, I, I don't really, I don't really love the idea. And second off, I don't think it's a, it's an amazing iteration on JavaScript still. I, I need to be convinced of that. I think that once the, uh, the React Native team finishes off their static Hermes, their Shermies, and creates a runtime around Shermies, I'll tell you what, that, on the other hand, that is an exciting project. That is super exciting. I'd love to see Shermies uh, 2024, 2025. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. All right. All right, we also have some other ones on here. We do have H uh, HTMX. Look at HTMX, by the way. You want to guess about what month I started saying HTMX was cool? You want to also guess what month Fireship said HTMX was cool? You also want to guess what month TJ told me 
about HTMX? Yeah. You know what you know you know what the best part about HTMX? It's most popular months spells JSON. The very thing in which HTMX is destroying. Like to me, just life has always been art unknown to thee. It's so good. Illuminati confirmed. <laughs> This is so beautiful. It's so beautiful. I'm surprised that React is still doing good. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, look at that. React on the downswing. Do you think React is going to be on the tippity top? Because isn't this about when server components started coming out? F my... There's nothing that starts with A that I could say there. Yeah, see, you guys got nothing either. Earth? <laughs> oh, Earth. Earth, yes. <laughs> Earth, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. A drizzle is really, really exciting. Drizzle is exciting in the sense that their account is wild. When I got totally dunked on on Twitter and someone totally just manipulated a situation, Drizzle came to my aid and just dunked back so epically. It was incredible. I have such respect for the Drizzle the Drizzle fellas. By the way, also Drizzle, they're they're pretty integrated with uh, Terso. If you don't know Terso, Terso is so awesome that they even give me a short link. D's nuts. Okay? D's nuts. And not only that, but if you do terso.tech, terso.tech prime Brazil, they're taking me to Brazil. And their goal is to have 100 production apps built over the next couple months. As, as excitement for going to Brazil. Yeah, they're flying me to Brazil. Brazil mentioned, yeah, Brazil mentioned, where's the gif? Where's the gif of the boy dancing with the dog? Let's go, let's go. It's early May, by the way, early May, early May. Let's go, let's go, prime to Brazil, prime, Brazil. Anyways, okay, let's keep on going, let's keep on going. Uh, overall winner, Shad, okay, I, I mean, I, that's semi-interesting. Okay, front-end frameworks. React is still crushing it, but look at the difference here. I do think that this is really interesting. Look at this, look at this kind of like this versus look at HTMX, we're st I mean, we're still looking good. We're still looking good. HTMX only barely undergrew React. Way too dank. It is way too dank. React 2023 maintains its position as forerunner, as the f the f the front runner. I said forerunner. Uh, that's Halo. Halo gets in the brain every now and then. In JavaScript ecosystem, a trend persisting uh, from 2001 and 2002, or 2021 and 2022, despite occasional criticisms and controversies. Controversies. How, how do the Brit how do them Brits say it? Controversies. Uh, celebrating its 10th anniversary, React earned a documentary. Watch it here. It says a lot about the popularity. However, React is not without its skeptics. Some view it as a relic of the past, a sentiment ex uh, expertly explored in this article. Antiquated React. Okay, interesting. That delves into alternative solutions. On the flip side, proponents laud React for its remarkable adapt uh, adaptability and capacity for reinvention. Fair. That's fair. Uh, all right, let's read HTMX. Come on, HTMX people. HTMX, uh, a, let's see, at two HTMX is a library that takes a different approach to provide interactivity to HTML page rather than writing several lines of JavaScript code. Okay, whoa, this is like the world's most underwhelming cell of all time. The word several here means about one million. Okay, like you got to remember that these websites come with literally hundreds of thousands of lines of JavaScript. So to say the word several lines feels a lot of heavy, yeah, several is doing a lot of heavy lifting in this sentence. It is, we're going deep. Okay, let's see. Developer and enhance HTML with specific attributes to enable real-time interactivity and dynamic up updates. It was lauded for its small size and seamless integration with existing server-side frameworks. Not only that, but existing uh, client-side frameworks. Like that's the thing about HTMX is that it can be put anywhere because it doesn't have opinions like every other framework, as part of its trend to send HTML over the wire. Let's see. As it's part of the trend, send HTML over the wire. Ask, uh, ask the server to send partial blocks of HTML instead of handling JSON in the client. Okay. In the same space of tagging libraries, Alpine.js is a popular solution, number 13 this year. Cool. Cool. Svelte. I'm very happy with Svelte. I think Svelte, if I were to have to choose a front-end framework, like someone said, hey, you're not, someone put a gun to my head and said, hey, you're not allowed to use HTMX. What do you use? I'd probably use Svelte. Real talk, I'd probably just use Svelte. I like Svelte. I think Svelte is, is, is about where I want to be. 
It's about where I want to be. Okay, people are saying, well, what about cross-site scripting? I know you guys are all memeing over there, but people are actually worried about cross-site scripting. Um, real talk. Sanitize your data, you dummy. Okay? General rule of thumb, store it raw with database sanitization. Sanitize it and escape it on the way down. That's like my rule of thumb, but other people have different rules of thumb. Uh, generally, I don't like to uh, – sanitization can be bypassed. Well, of course it can. No shit. But, you can, but that, that completely exists everywhere else. If you change the data to be different in the JavaScripts hey, – some people, some people try to sanitize before they put into the database. I don't think that's a good plan. And some people think that the client should do the sanitization, which I also don't think is the good plan. I think that you should have just the right place. So anyways, okay, e uh, React ecosystem. I don't, honestly, I don't care about the React e ecosystem. The view ecosystem, also don't care. Lovely. The backend full stack uh, ecosystem. All, look, there's Theo. Look, Theo won. Good job, Theo. Did we at least get, really? You're telling, okay, so why is HTMX not here? Where's HTMX? I don't get it. Doesn't H okay, because first off, HTMX was under what appears to be front end frameworks. It's literally not a front end framework. Like it's not a front end framework. I guess since it has no tech technically back end, it's not a it's not a back end thing. HTMX is a server solution. I'm not sure what you'd call it. It might be better to call it a full stack solution. It, only if you combine it with HTML, the programming language. Fair. That's fair. It's not a backend thing. That's true. HTMX is not a backend thing. Okay, fair. I, I will buy that. Um, honestly, I don't like any of these solutions. Also, notice that none of these are non Java. Oh, yeah, I guess this is JavaScript. <laughs> I'm kind of dumb there. This is only JavaScript. My bad on that one. <laughs> okay, build tools. Um, honestly, I hate all these build tools. I really am just not a fa fan of the JavaScript world right now and its build systems. Honestly, it's like it's just like everybody's version of of CMake. Like honestly, th there's actually there's only one ecosystem that's worse than JavaScript and there's only one ecosystem or two ecosystems that are worse than CMake for the C++ world because the C++ world like, you know, you just kind of have to go out there and you have to choose what you want to do. You want Bazel, Ninja, CMake, you want your CMakes to make b your ninjas? It's annoying. It's annoying. I hate it. But JavaScript is worse, and Python's worse than JavaScript. So, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Why is Bun there? Because Bun bundles. Bun literally bundles. It's a bundler. Anyways, okay, mobile. Interesting, mobile stuff. I don't know anything about mobile. I know React Native is really popular. People love React Native. I don't, I don't know anything about React Native. What's better than JS? Uh, Rust, Go, Zig. Um, any language, any language created in the last fifteen years, is pretty much better than in, than JavaScript in the bundling. OCaml, um, PHP, C Sharp. Uh, I don't think you know. Pretty much anything is better. You know what I mean? Almost anything is better. If like the the, the hard part, Elixir. I'm sure Elixir is better. Isn't OCaml old? It is old, but it's reinventing itself well. I think the thing is, is if you haven't used another language and you've only used JavaScript, you just like don't understand. It's impossible to tell you why. You know what I mean? It's impossible to tell you why a language is better. And when I be mean better, I mean bundling style. Bundling is just so good. All right, styles. I really like Tailwind. I'm surprised we're not seeing any Tailwind in here. Is Tailwind, why is Tailwind not in here? What is this? Styling slash CSS, oh, CSS in JS? Uno? I've been hearing a lot about Uno. I'm, I'm, I'm very curious about this Uno. Isn't Uno like a response to Tailwind and it's supposed to be smaller and a little bit easier to work with? Tailwind is not in JS, but it's, sty okay, it's, it's, this is only styling slash CSS. Okay, I thought it was styling slash CSS and JS. But it's actually styling slash CSS in JS. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. I put the in JS with higher priority than the slash. Does that make sense? 
My see, I had I had like I had the NJS as like multiplicative. It just didn't. I goofed it up. All right, testing play rate. Play rate's been really popular. Puppeteer is still really pop, pop, popular. I, I I deal with a lot of puppeteer these days, and there's some things that are really annoying about puppeteer. But I guess our puppeteer is more of a hand rolled one. Uh, it, it fulfills all the puppeteer uh, interfaces, but it's not it's not puppeteer itself, and so maybe that's part of the problem. Um, maybe we just have some things that aren't fully baked out. But it's I mean, puppeteer is really impressive. I really like what we built. Um, I'm very happy with it. It's still it's still very interesting. Playwright, I assume, is is just like a slightly different version of puppeteer. I've looked at some of the interfaces. I don't know how much different playwright really is than puppeteer. I haven't he even heard of storybook. And I've heard of Cypress. Cypress also kind of feels the same way, which is it just feels. Uh, Playwright is more popular because it allows other languages than J JS. Oh, interesting. That's cool. That's cool. Vitest. I'm very curious about how Vitest works. I want to actually, I want to go investigate how Vitest works uh, because I don't like how Jest works. And so I'm curious if Vitest fixes some of the things that Jest does dumbly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Static Sites, Astro is awesome. I love Astro. I guess I haven't used Next.js ever, besides for like a brief moment. Um, what, do I, what don't I like about uh, Jest? Uh, the memory usage. Memory usage is wild here. Uh, check this out. Uh, Jest test here. It's really easy for me just to run this really quickly. Uh, let's go like this. Um, and go like that. Uh, personal... There you go. I'm running two tests. I'm literally only running two tests. Maybe 7,000 lines of code. It's just a lot, you know. And if I had more CPUs, that number just goes up. You know what I mean? Because those are all just node processes that are running. Anyways. State management. Uh, state management. I feel like I feel like state management is. I'm very. Well, first off, I'm very happy to see. Re Damn it, Redux is right there. Damn it, Redux is right there. Um, I'm very. I I would be much much more happy to see state management kind of die because I feel like state management is an answer to a problem created by heavy clients. So you create these heavy clients. We then realize that they frequently get out of sync with the server, cache and validation super hard, and requesting more data can be difficult because you have slight nuance between some of the data you request, so you want to be able to reduce the amount of server-side chattiness that you have. So you come up with all these different ways to maintain state and to be able to update your state throughout the application because, again, locality of behavior just doesn't exist in JavaScript modern front ends. Like, there is no locality of behavior. You have data come down, go into store, store, update some set of components. Like you have this like incredible distance between where something comes in versus where something comes back out. State management is, I, I feel like a solution to a problem that doesn't need to exist. Graph Quill, Tan Stack, Tanner's awesome. I'm curious what he what he's doing to do all this. I'd actually like to just look at Tan Stack just to see it. Cause I just think that uh, Tanner's awesome and I'd like to see what he has to do. I don't know. Uh, you want to kiss me right now? Pucker up, baby. Uh, let's recap some of the stories and dramas of 2020. Ooh, let's see. Let's hear it. Svelte code base ditching TypeScript fi uh, files. I actually, while preserving type safety. Um, okay. Guys, type linting. Okay. It's really just type linting. But uh, Svelte, I think this was a good move, and I think that more people need to do this. JS doc is incredible in DTS files. DTS pl files plus uh, JS doc is this really the way to go. I don't know why people want to keep making crazy build systems. You can avoid, you can have the same type safety as TypeScript using DTS and JS doc. Just saying, down to type, man. I'm, DT, I'm DTT, okay? Down to type. Controversies around React, either too old, too complicated, PHP-like. I think PHP-like is actually their best move. Becoming more back-end focused, very good. I'm happy about that. I'm very, very happy about that. They just didn't go far enough. Uh, too complicated, absolutely agree with that one. I think that they got to figure out how to slim things down, right? Become less of everything. Become something more specific. Uh, the fall of Rome and the rise of Biome. 
Where's Constantinople in there? Uh, Angular rejuvenated. I remember when Angular got signals and they're like, no, we're cool. And people are like, nah, you're not. You know when Joe Dirt is by the gravel road and I think the guy's name is Rodney or whatever, uh, whatever uh, that girl that he likes boyfriend uh, comes up and like sprays some rock and dirt on him, like peeling out. And he's like, ugh. He's like, sorry if I got you there, Joe. And he's just like, uh, I'm cool. And he's like, no, you're not. Love that scene. That's Angular. Angular is literally that scene. The release of Bun 1. That was pretty controversial. For those that don't remember, Bun 1 released version 1, but I just don't think it was version 1, right? It just wasn't... It just wasn't version one. It was still, it's probably more, it's, it's closer to version one now. Astro 4.0, let's go. Stylex open sourced by Meta. That seems interesting. Theo loves Stylex. I'm curious about it. I'd love to see more about it. Um, all right. Uh, see, I, let's see. We saw the rise of AI tools that can generate UI prompts. Yes. Uh, V0 is actually really incredible. I still think V0 is one of my, uh, what is it? V0.dev. I actually really appreciate this thing right here. Uh, Twitch dashboard to monitor chatting and uh, activities such as subs and follows. The reason why I really like this is that when it generates this, I can go and grab just the HTML, and then I use that with HTMX. You know? Imagine getting tricked by another CSS in JS bullshit. Dude, tell me about it. It is wild. It is wild that people keep getting tricked by J CSS in JS. Like, stop it. Stop getting bamboozled, people. Hold on, let me turn off uh, Dark Readers for V0. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look how cool that is. You got subscribers. Look at this. It's building out a nice little dashboard right here. How cool is that? It's pretty cool. I think it's amazing you love V0 but have no idea what Shad CN uh, was. V0 is just sad, uh, Shad CN components. Well, no, V0 is, is more than Shad CN components. You know? It's slightly more because you can also get HTML. Like, pretty cool, huh? I mean, I love that. Like, look at this. HTML. Look at that. HTML with t uh, Tailwind. How great is that? There you go. Great content. Cool. Can't wait for the next stream, bro. But there you go. Look at that beauty. Look at that beauty. Look at that beauty. So now I can take this and just make it the way I want. Because you know what? Let's just face it. I can't make whatever this is. I would not have come up with that pretty thing. Like I wouldn't have. And so now you actually get to do the programming. You know what I mean? Uh, are we going to lose our jobs? No, absolutely not. Just think about it this way. The reason why this is so cool is that I can simply just go from 0 to 10. Right? You're not going to 0 to 60. Like You're not trying to build a UI off this. Here's another version of it, which I actually really like this one. This one's really... Look at that. Let's go. This is good. This one is really good. Right? This one gives you nothing. It's just boilerplate. Right? This is no different than having auto imports. This is just auto imports of CSS. User 1 based. Dude, You just imagine having user 1. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyways, I love this stuff. I think this, I love this. To me, this is the greatest version of what AI can do today, which is don't do a lot. Just give me a little bit, okay? Let me make the decisions. I just want you to just give, give me your seed. Give me your seed, boy. Uh, that's all I want is I just want your seeds. You know what I mean? User three followed you, confirmed. But isn't this awesome? I think it's awesome. Clip it. Wow. All right. Anyways. So as I pen down the summary for the eighth time, one can uh, help but wonder, could AI take over next year? Probably. I assume so, but not the way people are thinking. I just don't imagine it. Okay. Just really quickly. Let's just do something really quickly. Let's go back one year and let's see what our most popular uh, overall projects are. Bun. Tari, React, Next, Vite, TRCP, VS Code, Playwright are the most popular projects. Frontend Frameworks, React, Quick, Solid, Svelte, Vue 2, Vue 3, Angular, HTMX. Look at that guy go. He was even in there. Look at that. But look at what we got here. 
HTMX goes way up. Everything else goes way down. Um, ecosystem, look at all these guys. Isn't it funny how this happens? Now let's go back one more year. Just one more year. So now we're only on 2021. Most overall popular projects, Google ZX, what the hell is that? Does anybody know what ZX is? We're only two years back. Does anybody have an idea what ZX is? Vite, Next, React, Tari, Tailwind, VS Code again, Nako DB, no idea, Sly, Slidev, no idea. ES build, 3JS, nice. Okay, some of these we can recognize. Electron, <laughs> Axios, Strappy. Oh, you got to be careful about that Strappy, baby. Uh, Dino, Headless, like, okay, Bootstrap was on there. All right, let's go back to 2020. Let's see what happens. Dino, what happened if you go and choose the most popular project for 2020? You're, you're currently using Dino and Vue right now. Not even Vue 2, Vue. Also, just this dude. Edex UI. I don't even know what that is. Rome. There's Rome. You'd be using Rome, a nice build system. You'd, you'd be on this nice bespoke uh, build system that officially died two years later. Rome is dead. I know exactly. How great is that? You'd have to have a whole ass new thing. It's biome now. Ant design. All right, let's go back to 2019. View, VS Code, React, View, Element, Axios, Ant Design. Now you're definitely using Ant Design. Okay, we never even heard of it after 2021. Material UI, let's go. 3JS is apparently just this guy's picture at this point. That's pretty, that's pretty dope. <laughs> 2018, what do we got here? We got View, React, VS Code, Dino, Puppeteer, Create React App, Ant Design, I don't even know what day JS is. Parcel, material, prettier, D3, these nuts. Got them. Create React app. I know, I know. Look at this. And now let's go to this one. Okay, what do we got? We got view, react, create, react app, puppeteer. Prettier is much higher at this point. Electron's just killing it. Element, we don't even know about elements anymore. Webpack? Oh, you better get your webpack on. Better get your webpack on. 2016, what do we got? We got View, React, Electron, React Native, Redux. Oh, yeah, you're getting Redux. Imagine how great it's going to be. to do. You're putting in Bootstrap for your views. Like, look, at, I mean, and you're getting, look, Webpack. Like, just take a second and think about this. Choosing popular technology, you could be stuck with some pretty interesting choices. You could be having Bootstrap, Redux, and Webpack and React as your front end. It's not getting worse. It's the same, okay? Remember, whatever is on 2023 today, you will have the exact same feelings in the same amount of time. Viable still. It's still viable, but it's a pain in the ass. We have that. <laughs> Sucks to suck. I'm just saying, just remember, everything on here you're going to have a very similar feeling with in a couple years. Shush, I'm trying to Shazam the song playing. No, I'm not shushing. Anyways. So, just so you guys know, enjoy yourself. Build things. Don't get tightly coupled to them. You blame Trump in 2016 for this one? I would blame him too. Obviously, this was a response to the 2016 election is to put JavaScript rising stars up there. Okay? Obviously. Um, damn, huh? Damn. Look at this. But it's just, it's just all, all this is to me is just a really great reminder to just know that whatever you choose likely will not be useful in a couple years. Excalidraw has had a really uh, Excalidraw has actually remained really high for a while. Congratulations, Excalidraw! People have continued to like you and follow you and being excited about this, you know. But at the end of the day, it's why you should learn underlying principles and not just put all of your eggs into a singular library's basket. You know what I mean? Take time and explore and understand. 
be awesome, learn the fundamentals, because you know what? Real talk, tech debt has never been easier. It's a fact. Look at React. React was number one or two. Vue was number one for like three years in a row. It's not even on the top 10. It's not even in the top 20. Where the hell is Vue? Vue is 39 this year. It was the tippity top for like four years running and then just plummeted. Stars do not matter. Stars don't, uh, stars don't matter. It's established, but React is still going, right? And arguably, it's more established. You know what I mean? One could arguably say that React is more established than Vue, yet it's still there. So HTMX is dead next year? Could be. I'm going to still use it because I love HTMX. HTMX is one of those things in which I can use my foundational knowledge to continue to program well into the future. That's why I like HTMX. Oh, V0 crashed. My bad. Oh, it's still going. It's still going. It's still going. Anyways, I grew up on these streets too. This was me. This was me. I played the shit out of this game. All right. Anyways, the name is the front end of Jin. <laughs>